something pretty cool in Python. Let's make our own Mendelbrot set. So we import the graphics module. And if you just bear with me for a second, we're just going to initiate some variables. A lot of these variables are unnecessary to create the Mendelbrot set, but allow us to import and change it. So we can change the precision, say, so we can make precision equal to 100. We can change the maximum window size. So we can make this a variable so we can change it quite easily. We can change the scale, so we can change the scale whenever we want. We'll initialize it to 100 because I've played with this and that's a good initial scale. We can make an X offset, so we can offset the window if we'd like. Let's initialize this to zero. And we can make a Y offset. And let's initialize this to zero. So we won't be offsetting the window. So by initializing these variables, this will just allow us to play with the set so we can change how the window turns out. Now we can just create our graphics window, so win equals graphics dot graph win and we'll call it Mandelbrot. I hope I've spelled that right. And we'll initiate these by being the window max and the window max because we want a square window. So by doing this, we're going to have a 200 by 200 window so we can change it when we'd like. I do know this is a small window, but because of the way the Mandelbrot set calculates, we'll start with a small window for now. Now this is why, because now we have to make an iteration for the range on the X axis and one for the Y axis. So we're actually going to iterate for every pixel on the window, 200 by 200. This is the way we're going to display our colors in the Mandelbrot set. Because the way the Mandelbrot set works, we'll simply display different colors by how quickly they escape from the origin using imaginary numbers. If you want a demonstration of this, you can follow the link and have a look at number file. This is how I found out how to make this. It is a great description of the Mandelbrot set. And just by watching this, I found out how to create my own because they are a great channel. And I do watch it often. So now first we'll iterate over the range of the window. So we go for number one, because we're going to iterate twice, we'll just do number one and number two in range from zero to win max. Then we have to add one, because remember it does not include the maximum range. So now we'll get every value from zero to 200, and we can make y equal to, and please bear with me, we'll get the number one, and we'll divide the scale. I know this scale is going to make it a bit complicated, but it's going to make it more fun to play with. So to be able to scale in each time, we have to first centralize the window. So we'll just take the offset and divide it by the scale. So we're getting the maximum window and dividing it by two to first centralize it. Now because we have a scale as well, we have to divide this whole thing by the scale again. So now divide it by the scale, and now we need to simply add the Y offset. So now we're going to add the offset to the Y value. So now when we get the Y pixel, we'll iterate using the scale and the offset and we'll do the same for the X. So for number two, so we'll get the X in range, actually let's just call this more appropriately, number Y. So you might be able to follow it a bit easier I think. And we go zero to win max plus one again. So for the x value, we'll do the same. So we simply copy and paste, which I should have done for the whole for loop, and put it in here, changing x and y to x, and iterating over the range. By having this for loop inside the other one, we can iterate from zero to the maximum window value, so the whole window, each time we go across the y. So we're going to get every pixel one at a time, starting at the top left, iterate over it, and if it escapes quickly, we'll color it one color. If it escapes slowly, we'll color it a different one. Now what was also important was because some numbers escape so quickly, you might get an overflow error. So we've got to check for this overflow error. So now we're going to initialize a count to zero and a check to zero. This count can be run until the precision is found. So this count can check the precision. This check will record how many counts were run until a certain number was found. 
so we can find how many counts were needed until the number escaped. So now we need an equation such that we can check how quickly this pixel escapes. There will be another movie to describe this more accurately, so I'll just go for it for now. So it just follows so that Z equals the complex of the X and the Y to the power of 2. And we'll take away C. In this equation here, we're getting the X value to be the real one along the X axis and the Y value to be the imaginary value along the Y axis. Now we simply iterate this equation and find out how quickly it escapes. This C value on the end here is our randomizer. So if we change C here, or we, let's change this to randomizer, because this is what it does. So if we change this value randomizer, it will randomize our Mandelbrot set. So now let's create a while loop such that while the count is less than precision. So we're going to run this as many times as the precision says, so we can pick a degree of precision. The greater the precision you put in, the better your Mandelbrot set will look, though this will slow down the printing process. So now we need to create a point such a point equals graphics dot point. And in here we can make number x the first point since we need to iterate over the x first the number y and we're simply going to color this point according to how this iterates so now we're simply going to iterate over z so z equals z to the power of 2 take c so now as we get a new value for z we'll input it and assign it to the new z iterating it and growing it or reducing it every time so now we need one if statement for a check. Since there is a blowout so quickly, we'll make sure it doesn't blow out. And if it does blow out too quickly, we'll simply stop the while loop. So if abs of the z is greater than, say, 10 million, or whatever that number is I put in there, we can make check equal to count. So we now go to check. We can make count equal to precision. So that it stops running the loop. Down here we can simply make count plus or equal to one. So we keep checking our update in the while loop. So that we'll run this until we reach precision. And now here we need to simply color in our points. So we simply make if the absolute of Z is less than or equal to one, we'll go point dot set fill and we'll color it black. This first check I use because I know that's nice and neat coloring it black. This has got to do with the way the function works, the iteration. Have a look at the movie if you'd like to find out more. And we can use an elif statement such as elif the check is greater than say 50 and go point.setfill. Let's make this 12 actually and make this red and now we can simply do this again and we can make this say 9 and make this orange and I think you see where this is going so I need to stop this video and, and now as you can see we've finished colouring these points according to different check values so if it blows out quickly it will print red if it blows out slower, orange, etc, etc. So we can add in more check values. So if we want, we can make it more colorful, such as elif check is greater than 16. And we can add as many as we want, or we can put them closer together to change the color scheme. So by adding in a new one here, let's go back to orange. So we can add as many as we want, anytime we want, checking for more values. These values will be important for as we zoom in more, because when we zoom in more, these values will be what is printed out to the screen, the ones, the greater checks. So now all we do is, depending on which one of these are successful and true, we have set the point color, and we'll print the point accordingly. So we'll go point dot draw, and we'll draw it to the window, as we have named earlier. Because window equal to Mandelbrot set. 
And let's push F5 to save and run. Remember to save this in a folder with that graphics module because we've imported the graphics module. Let's hope I haven't made any mistakes. It's made a mistake here. I've got Y defined twice. I'm sorry guys. Let's make this one X because we're using X in this instance here. So in the first for loop, we're defining Y because we're number Y. In the second one, we're doing X. So we need to change this one here to X as well. I was being lazy. Save and run again. Okay, this one was going to be randomizer because I changed that. And there we go. We are now printing off a Mandelbrot set. Sorry about those little errors, guys. As you can see, it takes a little while to run. If we got rid of this check here, I'll show you what happens. It will just we'll copy and paste that. Let's see what happens if I get rid of that and run it. As you can see, you got overflow error. That's because the numbers blow out too quick. So that statement was just checking for a blowout, so it stops the blowouts. Now we go up here, as you can see we've got a scale. Now we've got this number here, I've got a nice little neat number, I've just recorded it, I'll copy and paste it. If you type this into your X offset guys, you can scale in up to I think 16 billion times. I think I found somewhere you can zoom in just for you guys. So now we can zoom in heaps. And this is when you want more checks so you can add the colors in here. So if you have checks above 50 and 60, you can add some difference. Let's get some more zeros. See how close I've got it. There you go. Now it starts going back to blue in the last L statement. This is because of overflow error. And just for you guys, here's one I prepared earlier. And a quick scam over this code so you can check it. I'll put it up on our Google and Facebook website so you can download this code anytime you want. Remember we end in the else statement and we can add more checks. So now you can see we've got some yellow in there. 